Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS. Today we're in New York City, and I'm joined by Tom from the AWS Solutions team. Thanks for joining, Tom. Hey, Matt. Nice to be here. So as you know from watching this series, normally we talk to customers and partners about what they've built on AWS. But today we're going to talk about an AWS team, your team, the AWS Solutions Builder team, and what they build on AWS. Is that right? That's right, yeah. Um, so uh, we build all of the content that we build you can find on AWS um, slash solutions. Um, I work primarily in media and entertainment, uh, and today I'm going to talk about a video on demand uh, solution that I built. Great. Yeah, often customers ask me, you know, you have all of these services, all of these different building blocks, but how do I put them together to make a solution, to make something end to end? And that's what you and your team builds, right? Exactly. That's exactly what we do. Um, and um, for this particular solution, uh, what we're look we were looking at is the media and entertainment uh, industry. Uh, and with the addition of Elemental Media Convert, um, what we wanted to do is build an end-to-end -end solution for how do you build a video on demand workflow on the AWS cloud. That's great. Okay, well then let's dive in. So you said there's sort of that canonical file, that, that source file. It's, I imagine, like an MP4 or something, is that right? Yeah, so uh, the idea being is that you're, uh, you would drop your source video into an S3 source bucket. Um, there is that event of uploading the video would then trigger our workflow. So that's an S3 event? That's an S3 event, yeah. Okay, so you drop your MP4 or whatever format, supported format, into the source bucket in S3. It triggers an S3 event. Before we dive into the workflow, I see you also have a Glacier over there. Is that an option for users? Uh, yeah, it's something you can configure when you launch the uh, solution. Solution is launched through CloudFormation. Yeah. Um, so all of this uh, architecture is spun up in your account within a couple of clicks. Um, and one of the parameters on the options is whether once the workflow has processed your source video, whether you actually want to move that down into Glacier for long-term low-cost storage. Okay, great. So your, your source file is in there. Optionally, you can move it to the Glacier storage class in S3 if you need it. You said it's an S3 event that then kicks off the workflow. So what happens next? So uh, for the workflow itself, uh, we spoke to a number of different customers about what they needed to do, what the requirements were. And there was a general theme of this single source file in, multiple files out. Um, but what we found is everyone had different specific needs, different output types, uh, different things they wanted to do. Some people were looking at processing images along with the video and so on and so forth. So what we wanted to build was a reference architecture to explain how you can build that type of solution in the cloud. Uh, and the way that we're achieving that is we've got Media Convert as our engine for encoding the content. And then we're using a combination of step functions and Lambda as our, as our actual workflows of the individual steps in the process. Okay, so I guess, you know, first question for some users who may not be as familiar with step functions, you know, why are you using step functions to, to orchestrate this? So step functions, uh, you can define a workflow, a, a process in, in a JSON format, so it's, uh, it's just a JSON file that you can upload into the system, and we can use that to, uh, or as an orchestration layer, okay. so that we can call on different Lambda functions to do different individual tasks. So this, the way that this is set up is, each step within our step functions calls on an individual Lambda function. Uh, and, and so what we're doing is we're taking kind of microservice approach. Mm -hmm. So very small Lambda functions, they're written in Node.js, no more than a couple of hundred lines each, and each step will perform a specific task. Okay, so what are some of those tasks? You said the Lambda functions are written in Node, you know, they're effectively microservices. What's an example of some of the microservices? So uh, at the beginning, if once we have that source file in S3, uh, that triggers the workflow. The first thing we do, we're going to do is going to validate that source file. So we're going to check we're going to have access to it. The upload was successful. Uh, we're going to pull in the configuration for the workflow that was defined when you launched the CloudFormation template. And Lambda is doing all that. And, and Lambda is doing all that. So that's that's the first Lambda step. Okay. We then have a second step where we're using uh, Media Info, which is some open source software that will actually extract metadata out of uh, from the source file. Okay. So we can get the number of audio channels, the resolutions, and that type of information. And then we have another step that's then we'll take all of that information and actually write it out to our Dynamo table. Okay, yeah, that was my next question. So what were you writing in Dynamo? So everything that we're capturing along the way, mm -hmm. uh, we're storing in Dynamo. Um, so for the ingest process, that metadata that we collected. Um, and then we'll have another step later on in the process that we'll actually read in that metadata from Dynamo and define which encoding templates that we're going to use in Media Convert 
are based on the height and width of that video. So we're demonstrating how to make an encoding decision. Okay, uh, that makes sense. So you actually sort of send media convert the configuration needed for the job yeah, that's based correct. on what you extract from the files and learn itself. That's right, and those are templates um, so that it's very easy to customize the solution by just replacing those templates with the, the ones that you want to use. So if you want to change the outputs uh, that you get from the workflow, you can have any different any type of output that is supported by media convert. Okay, great. So I see CloudWatch down here as well, and most of our viewers will know CloudWatch for sort of its standard monitoring. Is that what you're using it for, or is it something else as so well? So when Media Convert uh, finishes the job, it's gonna we're actually going to send all of the content out to our uh, destination bucket. Okay. But it will also trigger a CloudWatch event, uh, and that CloudWatch event we're using uh, to actually trigger our publishing step functions. Okay. So you have two separate step functions, two separate workflows. You have the one that does all the steps you mentioned earlier, and then a separate publishing workflow? Publishing workflow, what that will do is it will read in the CloudWatch event, mm -hmm. um, and it will get the information about the job yeah. uh, that was submitted to Media Convert, uh, and then it will take all of the outputs from Media Convert, write those out to Dynamo, and included in that is we're actually generating the CloudFront URLs for all of the content that's just being produced. Okay, so after all of the files are generated from the source file, um, they are made available and then exposed to you know end customers or whomever via CloudFront. Yep, you got global distribution for all of your different formats and all the different bit rates. So it truly is end to end from sort of source in to available via CloudFront on the yeah, other side. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then I imagine customers could take this and further extend it for DRM and security, et cetera. Yeah, but, uh, in fact, we've had a number of customers have come up with other options. Um, Part of this process that's not on here is we're actually we're using SNS to send notifications to the administrator. Yeah. Say a file has been ingested, you know, process has been completed. Uh, I know there was a customer on GitHub who actually wanted to use SQS. So we take the information from the Dynamo and put that into an SQS queue, ready to be ingested, in a you know, further down the chain in a different workflow. That's great. I love how it's sort of customizable and flexible for customers. And you mentioned earlier that all of this is wrapped up in CloudFormation templates. Yeah, that's correct. It's all deployed through CloudFormation. Um, all of the all of the steps within Step Functions are small, simple Lambda functions. So if you wanted to add to those, remove different steps, it makes it very easy to customize. Okay, great. Well, one last question before we close out. Uh, you know, you mentioned that customers are using this and they're customizing it. Is this sort of a demo out of the box, or can it be used sort of at scale? Give us an idea of how you're seeing it's, it being used. It is being used at scale. We don't have uh, details on specific customers, but I can tell you with uh, the solution is generating fifty to sixty thousand encoding jobs a month. So wow. it's definitely okay. being used. Yeah, fifty to sixty thousand encoding jobs a month is a lot. Well, that's great to see. I love the flexibility. I love how it is encapsulated a number of different. Um, building blocks and wrapped in cloud formation and it really solves a, a very real problem for media and entertainment AWS customers. It's good to see. Thanks for sharing it with us. Thank you. You can see this and many more solutions on aws.amazon.com/solutions. Thanks for watching.